Hey guys, today we are going to be discussing another missing persons case that has remained unsolved. Today's case is that of Logan Schindelman. He was born on June 27th, 1996 and disappeared on May 19th, 2016 at the age of 19. Logan was primarily raised by his grandmother in Washington. He was about six feet tall and about 170 to 190 pounds. He was a star football player at Tumwater High School and was an absolutely excellent student. According to to his grandmother, Logan started to experience an identity crisis in his teenage years, being that his mother was half white and half black and his father was Saudi Arabian. Logan graduated high school in 2015 and went off to college at Washington State University, but he only remained in school for one year before dropping out and returning back home. He moved back in with his grandmother and his half-sister. His grandmother said that she was very worried because he had been smoking a lot of weed at the time and that she she thought he was suffering from extreme severe paranoia because of it. She also said that Logan wasn't exactly sure what he was going to do with his life after dropping out of school and he worked a bunch of random jobs like a laundromat and then also on his family member's farm. On the morning of May 19th, 2015, Logan and his grandmother were both getting ready for work. Talked a little bit and his grandmother recalled that he was really nervous and she wasn't really sure why and it seemed that he was on a mission of some sort which really confused her. She said he also claimed that he had had an epiphany, but he wouldn't tell her what that epiphany was. He said he had to go and that they would continue talking later that evening. And after Logan failed to come home later in the evening, his grandmother tracked his phone and saw that he was near Olympia, Washington, which is actually where Logan's mother lived. So she just assumed that he was visiting her. The very next day, his grandmother decided that she wanted to report him missing because he still had not returned home. But the local police department was closed closed for the weekend, so she had to wait until Monday, May 23rd, which was four days after he was last seen. And once she filed this report, there was a very shocking discovery made by police. His car had actually been impounded on May 20th, which was the day after he went missing. His car had been parked near one of those mile posts that you see on the freeway, and his wallet, his cell phone, and a ton of food were all found in his car, but he was nowhere to be found. After this case, started to get media attention in the local area, people actually came forward and said that they saw him once he had parked his car near that mile marker on the interstate. A woman claimed that when she was driving, she saw Logan standing with two Caucasian men at the back of his car. One of them was about six feet tall, thin with blonde hair in a bowl cut, wearing a tank top and jean shorts that were too small for him. The other man had shoulder length blonde hair and was wearing a flannel with jeans. She also said she remembered seeing that car parked in the same exact spot when she was returning home later that evening, but this time the hood was lifted and there was no one there. Interestingly enough, the day after Logan went missing, three different people called 911 to report a car that strikingly matched the description of Logan's, drifting between lanes on the interstate very dangerously, and this was near the milepost where his car was discovered. Apparently this car was veering just like over lanes and driving absolutely recklessly, but it appeared that there was nobody in the driver's seat. But someone who drove past said that they saw someone jump out of the passenger side of the car, a Caucasian man with brown or red hair, and then running off into the woods off of the interstate. Searches began in a two mile radius of where his car was found, but they really were focusing on the woods next to the freeway. They searched by foot, they had a ton of volunteers, and they also did searches via aircraft and absolutely nothing was found. Apparently the area is very thick and bushy and it's very hard to see you, even your feet as you're walking through here and even though dogs have been deployed to search for his scent all up in the woods, it's just such a dense area that it would be really hard to find anything. And there are just a couple other weird tidbits about this case that I wanted to add. First, on May 27th, 2016, eight days after Logan went missing, someone checked in to the Olympia Airport using Logan's Facebook page. And that is the only and last time that anything like that has been done on his Facebook page. Also, using GPS tracking on Logan's cell phone, police were able to find that he got on the freeway and headed south, then changed directions and was heading north, and then changed directions once again and started to head south, which was when he pulled over on the side of the road by that mile marker. And unfortunately, that is about all of the information that is out there on the 
the disappearance of Logan Schindelman. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Give me a thumbs up for more, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.